In After Effects, I want to show you how to do a stroke reveal, but I'm going to start right from scratch here. New composition, I'm not bringing anything into it. I do have a fresh project open, so new composition. Let's keep it simple. And I'm just going to call it Stroke Reveal. Always good to name your compositions. Let's keep it at 1920, 1080. I'm happy with that. 24 frames per second. It's only 10 seconds long. That's fine. So this one happens to be the preset of HDTV, 1080, 24. That's totally fine. Background color doesn't re really matter, so I'm just going to keep it at white. Now just a quick something here, command minus just to zoom out, just to toggle on and off the transparency. So just because the composition starts with a background color doesn't actually mean it's there. You would actually, ha actually have to add your own background solid layer, new solid for it to actually have a background or add a picture or add a video or something like that. <clears throat> just a heads up there. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to bring in some type. So I'm just going to click on my type tool. And I'm going to do two sim you know, pretty simple ones, but just to show you um, a bit of difference there. So I'm going to, um, what you can do right off the bat too, is also just uh, click on your character panel. And if you can't have, if you don't see it open, you can just go to your window and go to character and there it is and you can actually click on the drop down here and say reset the character like reset everything to the, its initial basic of what um, the default was when after effects had it open and what i can do uh, i'm actually going to keep this like i said very simple so i'm going to type in bank gothic which is a really um simple typeface and i'm just going to type in the word hi all right, and it's really small, so I'm just gonna click on my pen tool and make it a little bit bigger, but I'm gonna zoom in because all those, that bonding box is pretty small to choose. And I see my anchor point is actually down at the bottom, and that's okay. What I can do to change the anchor point, I could actually just click on the anchor point tool and click on the anchor point and move it up, or I could hold down command or control on a PC and double click the tool and it'll automatically go to the center. So, and then I click back on the pen tool and just click and drag, hold down shift to keep it proportional. And that's the way I could do it. Or of course, I could have just selected it and I could have, you know, scrubbed this on the character panel, the uh, point size, but a couple different ways to do that. Okay, so what I have to do here, in order for me to do a stroke reveal, so I'm going to slowly reveal what's actually happening here on these letters. I have to create a mask. I have to create masks for each individual stroke so this down this up and down stroke this horizontal stroke vertical stroke vertical stroke that's why i chose this very simple typeface and very simple word so but the way to do that it's a little tricky here in photoshop this one little trick we have to make sure we do properly you have to make sure the layer is selected let me show you what i mean i'm going to click on the pen tool because i'm going to use the pen tool to create my lines now see what happens when i click on my pen tool my cursor actually shows a mask so that little square next to it with a circle in the middle actually looks like a, a pantone spot color but it's not it's a mask it's about to create a mask now if i start clicking it's going to create a mask for this layer which is totally great that's exactly what i want however if i did not have my layer selected and i click on the pen tool Look what happens. It's a star. A star means it's about to create a shape layer for me. My own layer. Just anything. My own shape. And that's what it would create. And that's fine too, but that's not what I want. So, and the option here now is I can have a choice here. If I want to create another shape inside of the shape layer, or if I want to create a mask. And this is the mask. Tool creates mask. Tool creates shape. Okay. So you can have multiple shapes. So right now, content. I'm going to add another shape. Okay, I could have multiple shapes inside of one shape layer. All right, I have whatever these random shapes are, or I can create a mask. So now my mask is on with this layer selected, and I'm going to just make a mask here. Once I close it, it actually is created. Okay, there's my mask. Now it also shows on my shape layer that I just created, I have a mask. Great, that's awesome. But this is not what I'm doing. So I just want to show you that it's important to select your layer if you want to make a mask. So what's going to happen here, the second I start um, creating my path, it's going to create a mask over here. So click on my pen tool and I'm just going to start clicking and more or less just tracing. I'm going to hold down shift to keep it straight, just tracing the lines. That's it. And I'm going to hold down a quick way to do this so it doesn't just keep on making because each line has to be its own individual path. I'm going to press command. I assume on a PC it's control and click. And what it does, it keeps the pen tool active, but it stops from 
the continuing the line. I'm going to start a new line here. So once again, click and drag and hold down shift to keep it at a zero degree angle. Perfect. I'm going to hold command and click to keep my pen tool, but I can keep on using it. Again, command click one more time, click and drag, holding down shift to keep it at a nine degree angle. There I am. I'm done. Now, if I look over here, yes, I see masks. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And look, there's four masks. One, two, three, four. Those are four individual masks. Now, what I have to do, I'm going to select them all. I'm just going to hold down one, hold down shift, and click in. And then I select all four at the same time. Great. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my effects. So I've already done it here. That's all I have to do is type in stroke, or you could just go to generate and stroke. You could do the same thing up here, effect, and generate and stroke. Uh, but right here, that's where it's located. Now, I, because it's already selected, I can just double click on it and it will automatically add it here. Or I can click and drag it on. And there it is. And in my effects controls, it shows up right there. Perfect. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to do a few things. Number one, I want the path to select all the masks. So all the masks are selected. I'm going to say all masks. And now that's a good thing. That's the first step. Now, next step is the brush size. Okay. I have to make sure that the stroke that I'm about to make, I'm make the brush size thicker as I slowly drag it. It needs to cover everything. It has to cover all that red, no matter what. Now I can fine tune it after. It doesn't matter if I'm not happy with one of the masks. I can go back to my tool here and click on one of the, um, the masks and I can move it if I need to move it, but no, that's exactly where I want it to be. Perfect. Okay, great. So my brush size is there. Brush hardness, we could tweak a little bit later. What I want to do is now I want to start animating something here. I'm going to animate the end because I'm going to show you the difference if I animate start and not the end. So I'm happy with that. It looks good. Everything's disappeared. It's more or less what it looks like. Great. So I'm going to actually start to animate something. Let's do, let's animate start. So at start, click on my stopwatch. So it's actually going to create a keyframe there. All right. I'm going to click and drag just a little bit over and I'm going to add another keyframe just by bringing this over to 100%. Okay. Now you can see everything. Oh, 100%. There we go. Now here's what happens when I start this. I'm going to press the space bar to play the animation. Nope. That worked out quite well. That was perfect. Okay, great. Start did a great job when I make it at zero and then my next keyframe, it'll be a hundred. Okay, great. So actually I'm going to uh, kill that just to show you the difference here, what we could play around with. All right, next I'm going to do end. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do end. So end, I'm going to click on, leave it at 100% and move it over and I'm going to bring it down to 0%. Let's see what happens there. All right. It reverses. Now, once again, if I wanted to, I could actually select those keyframes, right click keyframe assistant time reverse frames. And let's see what that does for us. All right, cool. Now, the one thing I should also have done is I have to make sure that my paint style is reveal original image. All right. Now, obviously we just saw what it did and it worked totally fine, but this option now as well, if I use it, I can actually go back and play around with how this will work in a different way, which is totally fine. Once again, I'm going to kill those keyframes, go back to the start version. Click on a keyframe and uh, make zero percent. Move it over, one hundred percent. There I go. All right, now that's what happened when I reveal original image. But if I go back to on original image, it shows up properly, which is totally fine. Okay, so just wanted to show you that the options, the, the few different options you have, the, the brush hardness. If I wanted to bring the brush hardness uh, way down. It's going to kind of be a little bit softer, obviously, and that's not necessarily what I want, but just to show you what we can do, obviously, with it. I'm going to bring that right up. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to show you, obviously, is this on a different bit of type, so a different typeface that was chosen. So I'm going to take all this, and I'm just going to move it onto my, a little bit further up. It takes individual things here. There we go. Okay, I'm going to minus out a little bit here. And I'm going to click on my type tool again. A new layer is shown. Once I start clicking and I'm going to say hello again. But this time I'm going to use a different typeface. This one is a bit more of a scripty typeface. And that's good. I'm going to zoom in. 
what I'm going to do there, command and double click on this tool to put the anchor in the middle and go back to the pen tool and make that a little bit bigger. Okay, great. Now, if I want, obviously I could just shut this off altogether. If I move this over a little bit more, we'll see that yes, the high was there. Great. That's totally fine. I'm just going to shut it off for now, the visibility of it, and just focus on this one here. So let's do the exact same thing. I have the layer selected. Great. Make sure it's selected. So we're actually adding a mask to it. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So this one's going to be a little bit different. Let's see how this goes. So it's selected. I'm going to click on the mask. And it does matter where you put the mask, holding down command and clicking. It does matter where you put the mask because if I draw it from down to up or up to down or from this side to that side, it is how it's going to appear. So you have to think about that as well and you can get pretty creative with it as well. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to have to create a curve here, right? So that's a clicking and dragging just like our normal pen tool in our other programs. I'm just going to click and drag. Now, once again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it can. And if I need to move my control arms, I can hold down option, can convert it to the, that convert tool. And I can actually control my control arms if I wanted to, if I needed to. I could have as many points as I want. And that's fine. And now I have this little lead in here, so I got to be careful there as well. I definitely want to add that. And once again, we're also going to tweak this later, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Now what happened there, that one did connect and I don't want that. So what I could do is I could zoom in a little bit more to make sure I'm not actually selecting that. That is on. Great. No, it's still connecting, still connecting. So what I'm going to do just to be on the safe side. There we go. Sorry, my command click was giving me a little bit of an issue there. Hold down option to break that control arm. Oh. Now I don't want it to connect. If I connect, it's going to create a full proper mask. That's not what I want. I definitely don't want a connection. So what I will do is come very close to it. So I don't want that cursor to turn into the circle. I want it just a little less of the circle. If I have to zoom in, I could zoom in to make it as close as I can. I'm going to make one more here. I'm going to go from here. Oh. Forgot to press command click again. All right, looking pretty good. Great. So next what I'm going to do, select all the masks, hold down, click on one, hold on shift, select them all. I'm going to go back to my effects and presets. I'm going to click on that stroke. This time I'm going to show you that way to do it. Just double click on it and it automatically adds it here. As I can see, there it is, effects, stroke. And there it are. There we are. Now, once again, I'm going to click on my, uh, make sure all masks are selected. I'm going to click on my brush size. I'm going to bring it up. And as I bring it up, I got to make sure that, okay, it's working. It's covering it. Bit of an issue here. Let's bring it back a little bit. Okay. So what do I need to do? I need to move some of these around a little bit. So I'm going to go to my move tool. I'm going to move this over a little bit. So it fully covers it. Move this over a little bit. So it fully covers it. So I'm having a bit of an issue there and down here. So maybe I do need to make my brush size a little bit bigger, which I can. This looks fine. That looks OK now. That looks better. And actually, this turned out really well, too. I just have a bit of an issue here and here. So let's make my brush size just a little bit bigger to cover all those. There we go. Done. Awesome. OK, now same thing. I can uh, go straight to the paint style and say reveal original image or like I said, you can just keep it on original image and see what benefits you get from playing with the start in the end. I'm going to keep it on reveal original image. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to play with the start. Let's see now what happens with start when I have a reveal or original image right away. Click on start. I'm going to make it 0% and I'm going to click on the next move. My CTI, my playback over and I'm going to make it 100%. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, so it disappears this time. Okay, so let's do the opposite. Let's do that keyframe assistant. Select my keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, and time reverse. Now let's see what happens. Starts off with empty, 
Ah, but it starts from the opposite end. I kind of want it to go this way. But once again, that's another style that I could totally use, which is which is fine. Or if I click off reveal original image on original image, I'll do that again. Ah, still backwards, but let me time reverse these again. And let's see what happens. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted, which is fine. So we see what on original image and what reveal original image actually does. But I'll know now also let's also do the opposite. Let's delete these or just click on the stopwatch and it'll kill all those keyframes. Let's do the end. I'll start off with 100. Let's just see what the difference is. And I'm going to bring it down to 0%. Click starts from the end again exactly more or less the opposite if i had reveal original image not the same and now i'm going to do something a little bit different instead of doing the time reverse i'm actually going to change this keyframe to zero and i'm going to go to my next keyframe and i'm going to make this 100 percent all right there we go again so you can do the start you can do the end with the start it seems you're going to have to on original image with the end you're gonna to have to do reveal original image so but play around with it have some fun with it see what different things you could do but that is more or less how we are going to reveal um, an image using the stroke reveal method I'm gonna turn this one on too and we can see what they do pretty cool all right I hope that helps stroke reveal and after effects